Hey guys. Right, let's do it. What was that? I said, yeah, let's do it. I'm more excited than recording. Uh, hey guys, Mad Science here, and today we're finally back from our six week break for more anime versus reality. Except we're going backwards a little bit to Initial D once again. Uh, we're going through Season 5, I just accidentally hit the space bar on my keyboard. <laughs> uh, so, f the first episodes, we start off with a bit of a recap from the ending of Season 4, and that's a pretty common thing for Initial D to do, honestly. At this Did we point, cover Season 4? We have covered Season 4. We covered Season 1, 2, the movie, which was Season 3, and 4. Uh Hi, that's what's confusing me, the movie. Yeah, the that's movie counts as season three. Yeah, all right, that's Don't what ask I mean. me why. Alright, go on. But yeah, so basically we got a recap of season four with uh, the race between uh, Joshima, uh, Toshiya, and Takumi. Like, technically he won the race because... Uh, Jishima wasn't able to continue. Like, he climbed out of the car and started throwing up or something like that. Yeah, he may have won the battle, but he lost the war. Well, <laughs> it's more the other way around in terms of what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he lost... He won the... He lost the battle, but won the war. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh... After that sort of mini uh, recap, we're back with Takumi continuing his practice with the uh, Subaru RWX his dad owns. And he's thinking about uh, what Rosuke told him about one handed steering and how it only works so, if you're 100% confident. As it was Takumi up to this point, he's um, really a good driver. But he always has both hands on the wheel. He never takes one hand off. Yeah. Like, uh, when to change gears, obviously, but um, he's trying to learn how to do one-handed. And you can see when he's driving, he's kind of going um, outside the line mm -hmm. of um, the roads. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, he can't really go off the roads, because if he does, he'll hit the rails. Well, he's not off the road, you know what I mean? Like, when on a road, there's he's that off line. His line. He's off his line. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, the uh, the A86, uh, Takumi's car, uh, is being repaired, considering uh, he did ruin the suspension. So, uh, the next battle will not be happening until the, the weekend after. You gotta make sure the car is at, the, at its best ability, don't you? Yeah. You wanna take a next point? Oh uh, yeah, Takumi goes to visit Itsuki, Ikintani, and Kenji at his old workplace to talk about upgrades being done to the AE86, which is fixing up the suspension and changing for tire size. Did you know that tires can expire? Yeah. Yeah. They have a life line. They have like four hands of tread or something like that. Yeah, this makes me wonder now if the Walking Dead because tires, they they it's like six years they expire. Oh, like even if they're not used. The rubber, yeah, even if they're not used. Oh. The rubber, so it's like. Okay then. Well, it sort of explains. That's another example of why they've. Like, each season takes less and less time to go through. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta reserve tyres. <laughs> Alright, so, um, again, back on topic. The conversation then changes to Takumi doing some exploring with Ketsuki to Kesuke. other locations. Yeah, um, uh, sorry. Um, Kesuke, um, which Takumi hasn't been doing. Later on, Itsuki takes Takumi for a drive in his Leven to show off his skills. But Takumi is too distracted by his own thoughts and musings of reality and future to pay attention. Yeah. Itsuki <laughs> are... Oh, what? No, that's just... It's just interesting how he's just like... 
as much as he's focused wasn't on it racing, like last focused on his future yeah. after racing as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think I find it funny, wasn't it? Itsuki that one time that was driving Takumi's car, and Takumi was kind of freaking out in like season one or two. Uh, no, Takumi was driving Itsuki's car. Okay, and well, wasn't he, there? A point? And he scared him because of how good he was doing, even though it wasn't. Uh, okay, no, no, because yeah. I swear it was when Takumi and Itsuki were on a double date, weren't they? No, and... are you thinking of the time where it was like the rain race? Like the, it was raining, so he had an uh, Itsuki it in the daytime. Match. I'm thinking it was daytime, and I remember it, um, Itsuki driving, and Takumi was kind of freaked out. Like, he wasn't like freaking out, but he was nervous. Oh, when Itsuki he was, was show, when uh, Itsuki was trying to show him his skills. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> There's so many moments, isn't there? Yeah. It's hard to keep them all true. straight. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, Itsuki asks Takumi if he misses Natsuki, which triggers a flashback to the season 3 movie, where he told Natsuki that he's staying to be on the Project D team. He answers that he's over Natsuki now. Yeah, she can get... Get on out of here. Go is, get. Is he really over her, though? That's, that's I don't think he's over her. Like, I think he's like, okay, I'll, I'm done with her, but he still has feelings, you know? Because I'm pretty sure Natsuki does return for the final season or something. I have no idea, but... Like, the very he's final like, race. But he's trying to move on, basically. Focus on the races. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Takum... Oh, oh, sorry, what? Take it. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, you take it. Uh, so, yeah, Takumi and Itsuki, uh, they they get to a rest stop and, like, just there's just other drivers hanging around waiting for Project D's double aces to show up. Like, what? <laughs> uh, these... Turns out these drivers are absolute fakers. They They do have the right cars. Yeah, but they got the, those dumb shirts on, the Project D. Yeah. You think if you're going to fake it, you I'm wanna... pretty sure you'll appreciate what I wrote here. <laughs> With bodies oh, like yeah, no. the Kardashians fake bodies. I had to make a roast that, that I yeah. I can't go through life without at least one roast at. Yeah, because I actually had to... Um... I had to watch um, the series before I did start doing my notes because... Um... I started doing the notes, but then it got a bit confusing, so I just went and watched the episodes. I remember when I saw them, like, what I said about their outfits, how they're stupid. It reminded me of, you played Fallout 4, right? No. Oh, uh, well, there's this guy, I'm pretty sure you know him. Uh, well, it's this guy, Preston Garvey, he's like, there's another settlement that needs our help. <laughs> and, and it's just meme-worthy at this point. And then later on, you come across this grifter who's dressed like the guy. Yeah. And he's like, I'm with the Minuteman. Um, I need some caps to help it, and you're like, oh, Preston, you look so different. He's like, oh, no, and then just runs off, <laughs> and he's been called out. And you can tell when, um, what's it called, when Itsuki um, is calling them imposters, he goes to Takumi, he's like, pull out your driver's license, and they got that look, same look on their face like the Preston Garvey knockoff had. And then Takumi's <laughs> like, I don't have my license, my, my car's in the shop, why would I need my license if I'm not going to drive? <laughs> So what? That is just hilarious because even if you're not driving a car, you should have your license on you. Like, even if it's like a no license, like photo ID. Yeah. He, he does he have a phone? Yeah. With photo proof of himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the next, so the, so no one believes him, and the next day this lady shows up who I thought was um. Netsuki? No. Uh, we we'll like, find no, out who no. it is later. Yeah. That was, that, that was my confusion. That's why I had to go back and watch um, the season from the beginning instead of starting the notes from where you stopped. So the, this lady shows up and, and she slaps Takumi. And it's like, right like a face. gentle, like, eh. <laughs> it's... <laughs> the big... It's like if you ever watch Indiana Jones and you hear those punches... 
Like that, but a slap. Yeah. So, so apparently, um, Takumi um, said something um, to her friend Tomoko, and and Ikatani like it's like no, no, it's not him. Yeah. It's like take a second look at him and look at the photo, and then yeah. <laughs> she and then she's she, like, like realizes she doesn't even realize what happened. <laughs> and so she leaves without. By realizing the truth. Yeah. Yeah. So Takami calls Matsumoto to tell him about the imposters and asks about how the AE-86 repairs are going. Takami is... Did did the imposter actually have an AE-86, though? Um, I don't think... I don't think it was, like, a a real one. You know, like, those kind of knockoffs? Like like the body panel work? Yeah, you know, it's kind of like when those guys, like, they get the fake sleeves that have tattoos on, and you think they got tattoos. Yeah. I think maybe it's something like that. But I don't know, I'm not a mechanic, so I know how cars work. Uh, Takami is antsy about what to do with the imposters without a car. The lady from earlier, whose name is Mika, finally finds out she slapped the wrong guy for her friend's sake. Oh, and this was something <laughs> funny. Yeah. Speaking of, like, mistakes, so... On... Oh, what day was it? Um, uh, three days ago, I was at the gym. So that would be and, a Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, I was at the gym. And we had to do this, um... And we had to, like, when we had to warm up, because I was doing the class. And, and the chick in front of me, um, and I'm not kidding, she she slaps the, um, the female instructor, Angie, on the backside. Yeah. And, and, then, and then when she turns around, she looks at me, and I'm pointing, no, nah, no, nah, that's her. And she looks, and he goes like, yeah, it was me. As a joke. And I was like, what? No, I'm, I'm not getting in trouble for that. I thought, I thought I was going to get hit or something. Like, no, 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 she did it, not me. I was like, uh, okay, so, um... Anyway, the following... so, yeah, the following day, like, Kenji is talking about how Mika and Takumi's, like, first interaction was such a fight <laughs> that they would make a nice couple. Because of how dramatic their meeting was. Yeah, so the I already mentioned that. Going on here. So yeah, Matsumata calls Rosuke to tell him he's taken the A86 to Takumi. And Rosuke says he's found the tag number of the imposter's car. So, what is the tag number? Is that just like the license plate or something? I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to quickly look up the ta- what a tag number is. And he's letting Kesuke... Meanwhile, Res- Resuke is letting Kesuke take care of the whole situation with the imposters. Yeah. You going to take over the notes while I search this up? Uh, yeah. Um, so according to Ryusuke... Uh, Ryusuke... Again, tongue tied. Uh, Ruski... Uh, how do we say it? Ryusuke. Ruske. Ruske, okay. Getting tongue tied. Project D is getting closer to entering its final stage. Ah! Uh, <laughs> get it? Yes. At Kanagawa, the holy ground of street racing. Upon overcoming this final challenge, the true meaning of D will become apparent. Uh, D stands for drift. Takumi gets his car and races off with Itsuki with him to the location of the imposters. At the imposters' location, Wataru engages them in conversation over the fact they both have AE-86s and wants to see a flashy drift from fake Takumi. This is um, all set up. Ta- Sorry, what? Just... Sorry to interrupt, but I managed to find out it, it is basically the license plate. Tag number is basically the license plate. They just wanted to sound uh, a bit fancy, that's all. Yeah. None of the tags are part of trucks, because my dad's a truck driver. Mm. And then he, he's got to have the tag up when he's gone across certain places to make sure the truck's registered. Uh, but anyways, this is all set up for Takumi's drift through the turn, exactly like what Wadaru asked for. The imposters try to leave when Kesuki shows up to say his name is Kesuki too. Kesuke. For the ultimate embarrassment, <laughs> it's Kesuke. Takumi... 
Kensuke, sorry. Uh, Takumi gets out of his AE-86 to reveal they called the real Takumi an imposter. <laughs> Makimoto tells the imposters off and sends them. And then, yeah, they're on their, they're like on their knees and they're like, oh, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're sorry. But honestly, that drift, like, that's like a, I think they've, that's become a meme sort of thing at this point. The drifting? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I remember I showed you that thing with um with Takumi when he's racing that guy and they got the music. I said, hey, hey, hey. And the guy's looking like, what? No, no, the drifting that just happened in the scene. Yeah, but they've used so the I've like I've seen videos where they use initial D and they use the drifts as memes. <laughs> yeah, but it's but it's like a, such an iconic moment in the show of like. Wato describing the drift and he just does like the snap of he just snaps his fingers and Taki does exactly what the drift is. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Takumi also asked fake Takumi to clear out the misunderstanding with Tomoko. Uh meanwhile, they don't get reprimanded too bad. Yeah. You know, it, it remind, and there's another reminder here, I haven't actually played the game, but it's one of the Yakuza games. And this guy is going around saying he's you, like the main character. Yeah. And then you have to beat him up, and it's like, oh, no, we're so sorry. No, I, I kind of wish that happened. You know, it was a big fight. Yeah. Instead of, like, a racing fight, it's just like, yeah, beat their, beat their butts. But, yeah. Uh, while you were talking about that, hey. over at uh, Yabisu Pass, and Gohojo and other members of different teams... Are watching uh, an orange uh, NB8C Roadster RS doing a practice run, and goes like, he's just there wondering how far will Project D get in their project. Yes, well, we'll find out as the episodes progress. Into and, number and, two. And, and speaking of Project D, who who do you think would win in a race, Takumi or Dominic Torrento? <laughs> Depends on the type of race. Yeah. If you're talking you're back, uh, like, you're... Uh, sorry, what? If you're talking like the race from uh, um, Tokyo Drift, like through the parking lot space. Yeah. yeah, that that that's what Fast and Furious needs. It needs Takumi on the team. <laughs> no, how would that even work? That's the question. Well, I don't... Well, you know, there's many different people, part of the Fast Club. You know, from different backgrounds, different nationalities. I'm sure they can yeah. find... I'm sure they can throw Takumi in there. Yeah. But uh, like, his, of... his stuff is drifting, not yeah. speed. So we need to find the perfect circuit that has drift. <laughs> the perfect, like, whatever they're doing. That requires drifting. Yeah. Alright, speaking of Takumi, in episode 2, he's still thinking of the slap he received from Mika, who's who he doesn't know is Mika yet. Yeah. But we know. We know she's Mika. The Ibaraki race has come and gone without the competition anywhere in sight. And then speaking of Mika, Takumi suddenly gets a call from her. How and, did and she, she got get his, um, the number, though? Well, she got it from the gas station, and she asked the attendant because she was looking for Takumi, and they gave her his number. Wait, isn't that illegal to keep someone's phone number after they've left a job? Oh, well, you know, it's Japan, I don't know, different rules, you know. I assume is if one is thirsty enough, they can get a number. Mm. So, he, he says he could go see her in the neighborhood without even realizing he said it, so it's like a slip of the tongue. <laughs> He's just like, oh, oh, no, like, why did I say that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so when they meet, Mika apologizes for her for her pro indie slap, just like, Tch. yeah, we'll have to get that clip and just put the Indiana Jones punching sound over it. No. Right, as, she, as she plays at her local golf club, 
But Dad gets angry if she skips practices, which Takumi can relate to with his early driving lessons. So, so right off the bat, or I should say right off the club, <laughs> um, they've got that in common. Their yeah, right off father, the starting line. <laughs> yeah, their fathers um, push make them, them to do their sports. Push them to do this stuff, yeah. But yeah, um, so Takumi tells Itsuki about the date and who Mika Yohara is. And that she's a year younger than them. Yeah, said, I, I, I'm just, I'm just going to take a guess right here before we get back on there. I, I'm going to I'm going to say she's like Happy Gilmore. What? We haven't <laughs> seen her soul, but I imagine she's just like that. No, I I know what Happy Gilmore is. It's like he does like the running golf swing. Yeah, but have you seen how far? Because he's a hockey player, because he loves hockey. Yeah. And he's not interested in golf, so when he's hitting the ball, he's almost scoring holes in ones. Like, he's getting the ball that close. Yeah. I don't think Mika's like that. Because <laughs> she doesn't no, I'm just do, saying, she, like, she doesn't do the run-up well. thing at all. No, but I imagine she's got, like, the same power. Just... Yeah. Alright, sorry, go on, what were you saying? But yeah... He, he Takvi um, says that he likes Mika, and Itsuki encourages him to make a move. Best wingman ever. <laughs> but getting back to the race stuff, uh, we'll go back to Kanagawa with uh, Go Hojo, who is the leader of Team Sidewinder, Eji Kubo, who is the chief mechanic for Team si Sidewinder. Hidero Minagawa, who is member of Team Katagiri, and Ruji Ikeda, who is the leader of Team Spiral. He also goes by Zero. Uh, plan how to plan to watch. Why, how well... why is it Zero? How about someone just goes by One? You know, call me One. No, yeah, so one? his he, the reason why he goes by Zero is because he's like trying to achieve the. Uh, like, zero emotions. Stuff like that. Yeah, but you, you know what I mean? You never hear anyone... I've never really heard anyone say, Call me one. And they'd be like, one? No, one. Like, the number. <laughs> Unless there's... Um, there, might, there might be an anime like that. I'll have to do some research. But no, I never hear anyone say, Call me one. <laughs> well, they... They're playing to watch how well Takumi... Uh, Takumi and Kesuke race on the first Kanagawa race and to try and get us uh, to expose Project D's strategies. Yeah, they need that, that data to win. Uh, yeah, and also uh, Satoshi Omiya is also there. He's the leader of uh, Team 246 and he's wondering about how indirect and hesitant Team Sidewinder's strategy is. Nonetheless, uh, Team 246 won't hold back against Project D. They, they're going to try and be the... They're going to try and be the ones that win. <laughs> you want to take over? Uh, yeah, sure. Let me just... Okay. Uh, where are we? The last part was Team 246 won't hold back. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the story then cuts to Mika's golf practice with her dad. She's wondering what Takumi is doing at the moment. Yeah, she is, is, not he. Yeah, she's wondering what Takumi is doing at the moment, which is spacing out at his job. Yep, always gonna love it when a character is just spacing out for no reason. Yeah. No, it's like they're contemplating life in its greatest mystery. You know, Probably just... the greatest mystery to me is why do people space out so much? <laughs> oh no, you know, sometimes life isn't too interesting. It's just like, uh, I'm just gonna... I'm, I'm gonna take five. Body, just stay still. <laughs> Body, take over. Ikatani and Kenji learn Mika's name from a golf magazine. So she's... I wouldn't say she's famous, but... She's well known. She, yeah. Like, I'd say, what's the word? A pseudo-celebrity. You know what that means? Uh... Or like, more like a up and rising one. Um, no, su pseudo um, is a person who has a certain degree of celebrity status, 
but isn't famous or noteworthy. Okay. You know? It's yeah. like, um... Ah, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's his name? Um, You've seen um John Wick, right? Yes. You know in the first movie, this is before John goes into that club to kill the Russian kid. He points the gun at the guy's head and he goes like, you lost weight. Uh, and he's and John tells him to take the night off. This is in the first movie. I uh, I don't really know. I don't remember that. <laughs> oh well, that scene. The guy that John um, pointed the gun at to. He's the guy that is the Russian in the Punisher movie. The one that oh. has the weird Waldo shirt on. Oh. You know that big guy? No, I haven't seen that. The you, seen, but you know what I mean. You know the scene, don't you? No, I haven't seen the movie you're talking about. Uh, okay, well, I have to show you that because that's kind of like, for me, a pseudo celebrity because I didn't even recognize him. Oh, uh, okay. Alright, so, anyways, um, getting back on topic, where were we? Uh, Takumi and Ketsuke take, uh, take to Yabutsu Pass for their practice runs where members of Sidewinder are timing their runs. Kesuki mentions he notices the members timing his run throughout the course. Apparently, the AE-86 is difficult to drive in every aspect, but Takami seems to have no troubles driving it at his same ability. Yeah. yeah this is why, like, I'm, I'm saying, like, um, when, if, you wanna, if you want to teach a kid, like, real skills like you know how to drive like takumi it'd be better to teach a 10 year old because when you're a child your brain's like a sponge yeah so you soak up all that information but when you reach a certain point your brain you, the spongy part of your brain is like full of knowledge it, it does kind of it's like a sponge it can kind of leak but it's still full yeah so you can't really absorb as much so it's better to learn when you're young than when so you get older is that why Takumi is so good at racing. Yeah, because he was learning. How old was he when he was learning to race? He, he was either... Right. He might have been like 12 he was or 13. Because he was for his dad. 12 or 13, maybe. Yeah, so that's why he's so good. Because it's, it, it's easier to learn. Like, with me, if I was learning to speak Japanese at age 10, it's easier to do it then than it is for me to do now at 25. Yeah. So it's a lot, be a lot more difficulty. All right, so yeah, Risuke. So, uh, right. Sorry, what? You go. All right, Risuke. Uh, Risuke. Risuke. I'm getting the names. Risuke knows the people collecting data aren't their next opponents, as there is no way to set up an opposing car for the race tomorrow. Takumi and Matsumoto take a walk on Yabutsu Pass to closely inspect the roads. And Takumi understands that locals know how to benefit from the changing road widths and won't drive on the unfavorable side of the road. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's basically knowledge of Sorry, the road. What? It's like, if you know one side's lower than the other, you're not going to drive on the lower side. Yeah. Well, you're not going to drive on the side that's like at an angle. Yeah, and that, then that's where Takumi has the advantage. Yeah. Because they, they think. They, they, they think they, think like, they know okay. everything, but he's using their knowledge against them. Yeah, it's, it, it's like Dragon Ball Z with Freezer. You think this is my final form, fool? So, yeah. Uh, the night yeah. the race comes around and Kesuke is annoyed at having to race yet another Land Evo. It's just Land Evo after Land Evo after Land Evo. Mostly because of how fast they are in mountain races. Uh, so, Kabaya, uh, Kabaya Kawa is the driver of the Land Evo, and he decides to be the chaser for the first race to do recon. Go ask Echi for a prediction on how the race will end, and Echi's prediction is to put up one finger. And what would you think that would mean? When you first saw it, well, one finger, you know. Um, but it's like one finger pointed up. 
Yeah, that it reminded me of um, Avengers Endgame, where Tony sees Do- Doctor Strange and he puts up the finger. I was, I, you know, both times I've seen it, I thought he was pointing at the sky. It's like, nah, there can only be one. That's what he's saying. <laughs> there can only be one winner. But yeah, it's uh, Team Two Four Six is talking about. Could be uh, Kawa's decision to be the pursuer for the first race, and if Satoshi used the same strategy to beat Takumi. Yeah, right. Why would you? <laughs> so yeah, Fubuhiro oh. has noted that l- lately the conversations between Rosuke and Kesuke have started to sound like riddles, with the line, half of my job was finished yesterday. And surprisingly, the explanation provided is actually rather simple. If either of them were to start in the lead position, they'd finish the race quickly. Oh, uh, but they don't, you know. They, they, they're they like, um, oh, I forget what that, there's an animal that likes to toy with its prey before devouring it. I forget what it's called, but it's like, it's like that, you know, it's like, he could easily win the race, but he's like, nah, nah, you know, I'm going to take my time to screw with him. Well, it, the whole idea is for, he wasn't trying to go fast. Like, he wasn't trying to pull away from the very start. Because yeah. that would have given the Kobaya Kawa the chance to actually win. I guess. Like, like Edge's prediction was spot on because uh, Kesuke wins by picking up the pace in like the final section and leaving Kobayakawa right behind him in the dust. It's like Kobe Kobayakawa is surprised by how sudden the change of pace was. Yeah, yeah, it's like what? It's like I like that in anime, you know, when they got those shocked look on their faces. Like, yeah. oh. I don't know why, but I, I find in anime it looks more genuine. Yeah, the shock. And I don't know. So with that, we move into yeah. episode number three. You want to take so? That? Yeah, so Kesuke he won the uphill by seven seconds. Yeah. That's so he, and it's like okay, nice. But but if it's any if it's any consolation, Kobo Yakawa did he did come first. He was the first loser. So <laughs> you know, is anyone really losing here? Yes. Like you know, even though it's you the, said first he's the first loser. loser. Yeah, but he he first. So there's no other losers behind him. So <laughs> he's kind of the winning loser. <laughs> Alright, so Satoshi states the downhill will be scary because his attack will be really close to his own limit. His, he's not a tongue tied. He's not afraid of doing such a thing, and that is what scares him the most. Satoshi Weird decides, logic right there. <laughs> yeah. Satoshi decides to be the leader in the first run of the downhill of the downhill and Ry- Ryusuke why I can't say his name. I don't know why. Uh, Russ, okay. R- Russ, okay. Russ, Russ, R- Russ. I have to R- right. Russell. It's like, R- like R- Russell. Russ, okay. Okay. It says they can take advantage of that choice. Russ, okay. Points out the steep section of the track is the deciding factor of this race and tells Takumi to adapt to Satoshi's change in speed as it happens and take an opportunity to win if it arises. The downhill is Takumi's AE86 versus Satoshi's Nissan Roadster. So that's Go. the uh, orange car that we saw earlier uh, during yeah. the practice run. Who the hell has an orange car? <laughs> hey, orange is a cool yeah. color for a car. Black and yellow is a cool car. Red and purple is cool. Well, you need the you need the car to be at least visible in animation. True. Although there was that, there is a black car at one point in the series. Go asks 
Edgy. Edgy? Is that how you say it? Edgy. Edgy? Edgy. Edgy. Go ask Edgy for a prediction on the race, but he says it's unpredictable because of the unknowns about the AE86 and Takabi. Which is interesting. It's interesting detail to include. The fact that it's unpredictable because Takumi is the one racing. Yeah. You never know what Takumi is going to do. Yeah. Um, um, so, Rusuke talks about how similar both the AE86 and the NB8C Roadster are in potential, despite being made years apart. Therefore, this race will be decided by the driver's instinct. Satoshi thinks ju- just watching the AE86 would be a risky move, hence why he went first. Kesuke knows Satoshi is a tough racer to beat and thinks he must have perfected street racing. Even Takami senses how hard this race is about to be. Both of them know that at some point the roadster will try to speed away from AE86. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Takami and... Satoshi passed through the midsection of the race, and Duckby's somehow still right on Satoshi's bumper. Kuba Yaskawa sees this and thinks about how it's happening the same as his race against Kesuke. Uh, Satoshi's tension is super high at the moment, but he still has one more level. But, meanwhile, because we're going to always get distracted from a race, uh, Mika takes a bath. And notes her legs have gotten thicker because of her muscle training. <laughs> yeah, I assume it's like from squat thrusts and that. That's how you build those leg muscles. Yeah. She's not happy about having to change her pants size, though. And she does want to see Takumi's race. But watching it would scare her. No. Oh, uh, it's a bit hypocritical if she asks him to see her golf match. It's like, you won't go see my races, but I have to go watch your golf match. <laughs> what? I'm sorry, I don't like golf. It scares me. That's why I can't go. But yeah, anyway, going back over to uh, uh, Yabitsu Pass. Uh, Rasuke starts talking to Matsumoto and Fumihira about how he believes the most important part of downhill racing is braking. You want to take over? Sure, sure. Satoshi picks up the pace of the race and Takami senses it. As they pass Go and Eji, Eji calls as they pass Go. Was this Monopoly? As they pass Go, collect $100. <laughs> so, as they pass Go and Eji, Eji calls out how stiff the AE86's suspension is and how the AE86's top speed is 100 kilo miles Slash hour. I don't know what that Kilometers means. Kilometers per hour. Okay. Well, now Whenever you talk speed, it's like distance slash... Like, the slash means per, and then the time. Okay, yeah, I've got to get my license. <laughs> Rosuke mentions how Mazda designed their cars to have the roll axis slightly forward of the midpoint. Matsumoto then says if Takumi can destroy Satoshi's balance, he could win. Satoshi is... Sorry, what? It's just... That's an interesting... Like, point. Like... You're gonna destroy... Balance somehow without... Like... Because Takumi's not one to hit another person's car. He never does. Yeah. He's not... He's not... It's not like... Because it's not... Even though it's... Street racing, it's not like those dirty tactics where you yeah. can ram other races, uh, you know? Not like in the duct tape death match that happened all the way back in season one. Yeah. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah. Because he's kind of like like speed racing, you know? Yeah. Fuck him, he is. He's just racing along, focus on the road, doesn't bother with the other drivers, just wants to get to the end. Yeah. Anyway, okay, uh, so get it back. Getting back to Satoshi and the race, uh, he's surprised to see that Takumi is still running on his bumper, and he turns he turns the mirror away, because he's like, 
He doesn't need it anymore. He's in the lead. He's all he has to do is get away from Takumi at the end. Yeah, so, so Takumi's like, "Oh, you want to play games? All right, let's play some games." And he just turns off his lights. Yeah, and everyone, like the whole everyone on the side of the road, is like absolutely shocked when they don't even see the car. It's like, where did the car go? <laughs> and so yeah, we get another explanation from Rosuke about Takumi's blind attack and how it's actually a two-sided diversion technique of confusing the opponent and hiding his offensive strategy. Basically, turning off the lights means he can hide, but then the moment he turns them back on, he can blind the person. Which is what he does <laughs> to uh, Satoshi. So, but yeah, Rosuke is like, he's thinking the real reason Takumi turned his lights off was to like reduce drag from the lights. But I will say, he, so yeah, as they get to a corner, Takumi turns his lights back on and so Toshi breaks his focus on the road because he's like it's just like that mental image of like you, you got like lights and then some other lights just really bright right behind you it's like you, you're not going to be able to focus after that uh, so yeah it opens up a gap for Takumi to get in and getting they get side on they get side by side on a one lane road. Uh, and like Takumi's like he's like pushing Satoshi towards the wall. But neither of them hit a wall. Like Takumi doesn't hit the guardrail and S Satoshi doesn't hit the wall. His spoiler does hit a signpost though. And that damage spoiler starts to cause his car to oversteer and he spins out. And Takumi just just drives on by and keeps going. <laughs> that, yeah, that's how he won the race. Yeah, that's how he wins the race. It, like, does he even touch the opponent's car? He makes them take out their own like instruments on their own car. Damn fool. <laughs> We're proven that uh, signpost is stronger than spoiler. <laughs> Haven't we? Oh, I don't know, you know, it depends on who did the, the um, job and the framework, you know? Maybe they did a sloppy job. Like, it, like, the spoiler broke in such a way that it didn't fully break off. Okay, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Well, we're going to episode four now. All right, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. So Satoshi's like assessing the damage to the spoiler, and he he says that he got unlucky because well, the the spoiler didn't break off for him to have the event to keep his advantage. And AG is even surprised that. Takumi managed to win the race. And Go asks Eiji to contact the stopwatch members to leave. Kai's also excited to hear that Takumi won the race as he can get his revenge on Takumi for the Aroha Slope victory. Do you remember that race? Oh god, that was so long ago. Do you remember where, why uh, Takumi managed to win? I know what you're saying, I just can't rem remember it. The leaves, you know? remember? The leaves. The, uh, like, Takumi and Kai were side by side, the, and they land, and on Kai's side there was a bunch of leaves. And that caused him to spin out because he didn't have traction. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 now I do. It was the same race where Kai was leaping off turns to get ahead of Takumi. 
You wanna take the next point? <laughs> so why not? Um, okay. Uh, where were we? Sorry, um... Uh, Itsuki pretends to be an interviewer to ask how Takumi feels after his first victory in Kanagawa. Takumi doesn't like getting interviewed. Takumi's next Kanagawa race is in two weeks by decision of Project D as a whole. Ikatani, Kenji, and Itsuki want to go see one of Takumi's pro-level races for themselves, even thinking of staying overnight to watch Project D practice before the race. Rosuke calls, sorry, uh, Rosuke calls Matsumoto for a special favor for something in his own car that's outside of Project D. He knows an unavoidable fate is drifting around the corner. <laughs> this apparently also has something to do with a person named Kaori, which we will be covering in the Kaori, next video. Yes. Uh, Takami and Mika make plans to go to the beach the next day on Takami's free weekend. The next day, Itsuki, Kenji, and Ikatani reminisce about the beach and, and all the hottie girls that would be there. <laughs> then the conversation turns a bit pervy, with, with the three of them thinking about old female school uniforms, being a miniskirt that flashed the pantsuit, and how <laughs> some still do today. I, I, I love how I had to include that. Because it, it, they talk about that in the show. I'm like, I'm not being inappropriate. They talk about it in the show. <laughs> Who doesn't love the pants too? Like, because... I feel like we have, we gotta have like the exception of like if they have a moment of like the bleep swear word or something like. That, we gotta make like we can mention of that. <laughs> yeah. It gets worse when Ikatani and Itsuki feel the same about how girls should only wear bikinis when meeting a man in a dark private room. I mean, oh. if they're stripping, yeah, but... All I have to say that is... They need, they need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> the at just like, oh, why are you existing? <laughs> Mika is happy everything is progressing well between herself and Takumi. In a rare moment, Takumi also seems to be happy. Kenji, Ikatani, and Itsuki talk about how Takumi has been looking sharp lately and more manly due to his boost in confidence as an ace of Project D. Mika wants to take her relationship further with Takumi by asking him to just call her Mika, and that's um, Ooh, a big, in that's a big, in that big progress in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, because normally you always say a girl's last name. Yeah. But if if you say their first name, then it means that you're intimate with them. Yeah, it's either intimate or, like, best friends. Yeah. Best friends also seem to have that same sort of thing that of, like, first yeah. name territory. Yeah. Anyway, since Takumi took the Impreza... And Bunsen took the A86 out for a test drive on Akina. And he's surprised the balance is better than expected. All Bunsen can do at this point is to be prepared for Takumi's eventual end of a winning streak. Because it is it is a big winning streak at this point. Like, he's... There's like... How many more races left for Takumi? It's like two more? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's two more. Anyway, the A86's insides have been changed to incorporate a roll cage, which is what Takumi meant by safety stuff. To Takumi, it's strange, like sitting in a solid box. Which, uh, that solid box would save you, Takumi, in case you ever go flying off a cliff. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, the next race is in Hakone, is, and it's approaching fast. And Kai is confident he won't, he can't lose in his eventual rematch against Takumi, because like it's his, uh, it's his home road now. And Kai says uh, Project D's strength lies in the immaturity, while flashbacks play showing Kai's loss to Takumi at the Aroha Slope, which is the the Leaf Instant. Uh, 
Takumi, Kesuke, Tomiguchi, and Kenta taking the view of Mount Fuji. And after Kenta proves he doesn't know basic geography of Japan, <laughs> Fumihiro tells them all to hurry up and have breakfast. By the way, just as a side note, I, did you know that um, Japan's uh, Sudoku forest is located on Mount Fuji? No, I didn't even know Mount Fuji had a forest. Uh, oh, yes, it it, it's like around the base. Like, there's, there's a lot of trees around the base of the mountain. Barely. I, I did not know that. But yeah, there's a actual forest that's known as the Sudoku Forest. Um, if you remember, Jake Paul... I think it was Jake Paul went there. Jake or, Paul Logan or something like that. Oh, it might be Logan Paul. One of the Paul brothers went there and... The, the whole controversy of, like, showing the dead body. Oh, and they didn't know it was a dead body. Yeah. Like, that 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 was in that forest in Japan. It's actually... Oh, okay. Uh, basically, where Project D is, is, like, on the... Op it's... The forest is on the opposite side of the mountain from them. So they're very safe, but I just wanted to mention that forest. God, that was so, what you're saying. That was so long ago. Uh, like 2016 or something. Yeah. Wow. I I, I just wanted to mention that because it's it's just an interesting piece of information about Japan and Mount Fuji. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Project D have arrived on Hakone. And Takumi is surprised that see Kai there as well. Kai is racing Takumi, and rather than choosing leader or chaser, he lets a coin fl flip decide. Not the sm smartest idea. The coin flip is tails, so Takumi will be the leader in the first run. Meanwhile, Ken has called Bunta to let him know that Kai and Takumi about to race again because like Ken and Bunta were rivals in the past weren't they? Um yeah. So it's like they're continuing their own rivalry through their kids which is like why? Uh, it's like those olden days where um uh, what was it? It's samurai days. <laughs> Not the samurai days um I forget what it was but you, they'd have the children and the, the ones in charge of raise the children. It's like these people are our enemy that makes them your enemy too. Also, I've just, very... my white shirt is absolutely reflecting the light. <laughs> I should have chosen a different color. Should get a green green screen shirt. <laughs> just be ahead, flopping around. Nah. Anyway, you want to take the next note? Oh, but you're doing such a good job here. Ah, uh, fine. Rosuke well, is confident in Takumi and Kesuke winning their races. And Kai knows the A86's abilities and is confident that if he doesn't make any mistakes, he can win. But obviously he's not going to win. <laughs> so Kesuke talks to Kenta about how the course can be split into three sections to be combined into an overall strategy. Takumi's chance of winning in the first run has to happen in the f third section of the course. Kesuke even alludes to Takumi's gutter run technique as to how he will need to ri win. You want to, are you sure you don't want to take over? I'm not sure I can take over. Especially with you, such a yeah. big explanation bit coming up. For the last yeah. few points. Yeah. Are you uh, lost or something? The last three yeah. points were on. Yeah, I got <laughs> lost. Like, I, no, I, when I went to go touch the mouse, I just went all the way up. Oh. All right, here we go. <laughs> Rusuke caused, Takumi, caused Takumi's peak performance, the Fujiwara zone, 
a phenomenon that only occurs between Takumi and his AE-86. Kesuke has seen it for himself where Takumi somehow pulls away from Kesuke during their practices with no explanation. Suddenly, Takumi starts pulling away from Kai in this legendary Fujiwara zone. Ris Risuke then explains the peak of the Fujiwara zone to Fumahiro, which is essentially a point where Takumi's rhythm changes from stepping on the gas, then releasing immediately to, dealing, to delaying the release a bit. All the way back in Akana, all the way back in Akana, Risuke caught a glimpse of the Fujiwara zone from his first race against Takumi. So literally the from the first race, the first so long. race. I don't even remember that first race. Well, not even the first race. Like the first race against, like Risuke. Like yeah, I can't even remember that far back. <laughs> yeah, it's that like season one. Yeah, the Fujiwara zone is where both Takumi and his AE-86 become one like it's his own limbs. Takumi can fine-tune the control and acceleration of the AE-86 to the point it accelerates like a 4WD. Even Risuke can't fully explain the Fujiwara zone. It's like the yeah. Twilight Zone. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's an interesting thing that, like... Somehow this stuff that Rosuke can't even explain. It's like... How do you explain the unexplainable, basically? Yeah. Also, I just love the description of, like, it becomes, like, his own limbs. <laughs> All I can just picture is, like... Uh, if you know the Cart Titan from Attack on Titan... The what? Cart... Titan. The cart. What season? Oh, it's season four. You haven't. No, no, I haven't seen it. But yeah, the cart Titan's like one of the Titans, and it's like it runs on all fours. <laughs> That's literally what I picture. But on a small scale, obviously. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to end the episode here for today. Links are going to be in the description to both of Bailey's channels and also both of my channels for you guys to go check out. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know next video comes out. A ding, a ding, a ding, a ding. Dong, dong, dong. Dong, yep. dong. <laughs> I'm the Mad Scientist. Mad Scientist, out. See you, everybody. <laughs>